Hey everyone, wanted to make a quick video on GPTK3 was released with macOS Tahoe, so I installed macOS Tahoe and I wanted to go through, um, really I was testing out Cyberpunk, I wanted to showcase uh, Oblivion a little bit, I'll be making a dedicated video on that. But basically, the long and short is that you are able to get DLSS running, and then if you run Crossover's Preview, you can even get DLSS frame generation working. Um, so you can see here, uh, from my testing on Crossover's, it wasn't there, but then when you do Crossover Previews, you do get DLSS frame generation, and you can confirm that it works um, when you do Metal FX HUD. And then also showcasing here in Oblivion that you get the same thing when turning it on. Um, but to get Oblivion running, I had to turn off uh, the metal HUD because it kept crashing. So kind of going into how to actually do this, there's a couple of ways. Um, all right, everyone. So I actually recorded all this voiceover and I was using my AirPods. So it was a really crap quality. This is a second take. Basically, when you download the file, you'll have this evaluation environment. Um, so the GPTK file has an evaluation environment. You install that, opens a finder window. There's a readme file, which gives you instructions, which you're kind of in my opinion, not too clear. Um, and luckily there was a YouTuber, Andrew Tsai, who was live streaming and showcasing what to do. I've kind of went through and also showed another fast way to do this. One is CX Patcher, which has been updated. So you can simply just download this, run CX Patcher, um, similar to you know other videos I've shown, but it's basically you open it up, drag uh, crossovers in and it patches it. That will get you to GPTK3, but it won't get you the DLSS that you need these DLLs, they need to be put in the right place. So when you go to Finder, um, I have CX patched. So it made this crossover patch. So you go to shared support crossover and then the lib uh, 64. Um, in there, there's the Apple GPTK. So the external one was patched by GP uh, by CX patcher. But here in the wine folders, you'll need to actually copy and paste um, the DLLs. So technically the GP TK, maybe I need to redo this video, but I copy and pasted these just as is, and those were the two ones. So maybe I actually need to delete it and redo this, but it was still working. So there's new DLLs that are added, which is the NVGT ones. You also have to go into here. If you go into uh, crossovers and hit open C drive, you'll get into Windows System 32. You'll paste in the two DLLs um, as well, which is the NV and the NVAPI64 and the NVGX. So kind of just recapping, when you download Gameport Toolkit from the website, the inside of the DMG is an evaluation environment. You have to double click that as well. Once you get inside that, you should be able to see these folder structures. The Wine folder has what you need and you'll need to copy and paste that. So what I'm showcasing now is the crossovers package content inside you can navigate. Um, to this Apple GPTK, which has a wine folder that you'll paste from the downloaded files to the crossover package windows. Um, and then the last thing you have to do is when you go to, if you hit Finder, Alt, Go, Library, there's a crossovers um, application support window. And then there's a bottle, mine's name Steam. And then here that's cxbottle.conf. Uh, so once you do that, you scroll to the bottom and you're going to have to put in this D3. Uh, D3DM enable metal FX equals one. And then from there, you'll be able to choose DLSS super generation. Now, as I did mention in the beginning of this video, you need, at least for my testing, or maybe if, unless I did something wrong, it only allows DLSS on crossover 25 and you need crossover preview. And then you also have to hit the tab for crossover. Like there's a settings as crossover previews to actually get DLSS running or not, sorry, uh, frame generation. Now with just DLSS, uh, when you have the metal HUD running, you can see here um, underneath the graph, it says metal FX scaling, input resolution, scaling target rate. So for me, that's confirmation that it's working and running the right DLLs. I think if you don't have this showing, then it's probably not working appropriately. Um, and then people on the Reddit Mac gaming forum said you need Mac Tahoe. Now, to get frame generation, you could Google search Code Weaver's uh, crossover preview. Here I'm showcasing it. You download the latest one, which was 5.7. Uh, once you download it, I already have it installed and I already patched it with CX Patcher. You still need to go in and get the files for the DLSS and paste them like before. So once you do that, then you'll have DLSS frame generation. And I did notice that 
when it does give you the warning that you should restart the game, you should actually do that because I noticed that some of the testing was off. But once you do that, now we can notice that frame interpolator is enabled, um, which is so this right, this benchmark is the LSS and frame interpolator. And you're seeing here that the frames per second is now getting up to 60 frames per second, where before without frame gen, it was 30. Um, I did go, went ahead and tested the AMD FSR because I haven't benchmarked this game before on the M1 Max. Um, so here we could, it shows you DLSS quality, the frame generation, stuff like that. And when I restarted the game and tested out with AMD frame generation and AMD FX resolution three, um, doing the quit the game, restart, run the benchmark, uh, we actually get, you know, kind of good performance as well, I think, on the M1 Max, but it's not, there, there is a difference of about five frames when you see the end video, it will show you, um, and I'll go ahead and just cut to that. I'm gonna showcase this benchmark a little bit more, um, but yeah, let's cut to the end screens. Here is the money shot. Basically on the left is DLSS with frame generation, 63 frames per second, then AMD with AMD frame gen, this AMD frame gen and FSR3. Um, and uh, I will say on that, uh, if you notice on the metal HUD, it did not say frame interpolator or at least using metal FX to do it. So the difference of 57 frames per second versus 63. And I was gonna end the video here doing just um, Cyberpunk, but I was finally able to get Oblivion running. I had to turn on eSync and this is running on preview. Now, unfortunately I never did a test. Um, when my late, my last Oblivion video was in the sewers and I never showcased, but I'm, you're just gonna have to believe me. <clears throat> when you were playing in the open world on medium settings on the AMD, it was like 20 frames per second when you look at really far. Um, now with DLSS, it's still pretty bad, but it's like 40 frames per second. But when you're not looking out into the distance, um, oh, another thing I want to mention is that Metal HUD crashes this game, so I had to turn it off. Um, but yeah, I'm getting some weird graphic glitches. I'm, you know, obviously trying to get this video out quickly. Um, maybe in more testing, I'll reset or figure out how to recompile shaders. Um, but yeah, the, the settings were put on high, and it was still uh, kind of low. But we're seeing here like 110 frames per second with DLS frame gen and reflex boost. I'm not sure if reflex boost even works. Um, but yeah, I'll end this video so you get the eight minutes on YouTube by just re-showcasing DLSS is working, um, NVIDIA's DLSS, uh, there already was the AMD FSR, and it does have frame gen using Metal FX, and we're getting um, pretty good performance boost, so I'm gonna test out to see if Spider-Man 2 runs, I'm downloading it, and then I'm gonna, if that doesn't work, I'm also gonna retest Spider-Man, because I think the first Spider-Man is like my go-to game for testing. So yeah, if you guys have any questions, let me know um, on Reddit, on the RMAC Gaming subreddit, and then I also answer YouTube videos, uh, comments. So let me know if you have any questions. Hopefully this audio recording came out better. See you guys in the next video. Peace.